Welcome. One of the things that I'm hoping to do as part of the superintendent's update is to share some timely information with you on topics that we know are of interest to our community and to our staff. And today I'm going to be joined by Chief Operating Officer Paul Lebo. Today we wanted to kind of zero in on one of the concerns we've heard and that has to do with ventilation in the buildings and there's a lot of information out there, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So Paul, why don't we start off by talking about the experts that live in FCPS who are going to help us with this? So I appreciate that question um, because I think uh, we have a phenomenal maintenance team and they are so oftentimes just working behind the scenes that many um, individuals on our own staff and in the community are unaware of the expertise that we have um, as it relates to maintenance professionals. And so specifically related to ventilation, FCPS employs 32 HVAC technicians who are responsible for the ongoing maintenance of all of our maintenance of all of our ventilation systems um, throughout the district. Um, and in addition to those 32 positions, we have foremen and supervisors who oversee not only the HVAC technicians, but electricians and plumbers who also bring that skill set of heating, ventilation, and air conditioning to the system. So we're very fortunate that we have a strong cadre of individuals who maintain our ventilation systems throughout the district on a daily basis. And I know that you and your team have been very committed to ongoing learning and professional development during this crisis. The CDC has put out a lot of informational webinars that I know you have attended, but there have also been webinars from other sources sharing guidelines, focus areas, things you need to do to help mitigate this. And one of the things that we have had in place and been building over the last couple of years is a key factor in support during this pandemic, and that's our automated systems in our buildings. So how does that help us in navigating the pandemic? Absolutely. So in addition to the HVAC technicians, we also have a team um, of building automation specialists. And one of their responsibilities is to monitor our systems, our mechanical systems throughout the district, and look for anomalies, look for challenges with temperature and humidity, um, and, and any operating conditions that would cause concern and then be able to dispatch our technicians to be able to look at those um, conditions and determine if there are issues that need mitigated or um, addressed. And that's really important for us because it gives us a centralized look with expertise who are solely focused on, on that um, to be able to respond appropriately when um, there are issues that arise. So we know in almost real time. And I know one of the recommendations had to do with airflow, just having air circulating. And because of these automated systems, we're going to be able to get airflow going two hours before anyone even comes into the building, correct? That's correct. So, so our team has modified our operating sequences for our facilities. Um, and this was done in response to COVID-19. But specifically to ventilation, we have started the operating sequence two hours prior to occupancy. And that those building conditions um, remain for two hours after occupancy. And what that does is it increases the amount of outside air that is brought in through our systems. Um, and you have to think commercial um, mechanical systems are very different than your home. So we introduce outside air through our HVAC systems and it is basically acting as like a flush through the buildings. Um, and that again, that sequence was done in direct response to, to COVID-19. So we've talked about the fact that we have in-house expertise, that we have automated building systems, we've been staying up to date on the guidance and ensuring that we're ready. Um, but I think it's really important that people understand when we talk about minimizing risk, when we talk about slowing the spread of COVID, really is a big picture and ventilation is just one part of it. So do you wanna talk about that a little bit? Sure, absolutely. So it's important to remind um, the community that it really starts with the basic prevention efforts. So masks are required in all of our school buildings. We are encouraging frequent hand washing if soap and water are not readily available to use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer, which we have now made available in every single classroom throughout um, the district, to remain socially distant whenever possible um, to, to keep that spacing um, from others, and then increased cleaning. 
and that's another protocol. Um, FCPS prior to COVID used um, cleaning and disinfecting products that were already approved by the EPA um, as being effective against COVID-19. Um, so we have continued to use those products, but we have uh, had an increased focus on um, frequently touched surfaces. And then in addition to that, um, ventilation changes um, are another consideration as part of that overall mitigation strategy. And so as we talked about earlier, things like increasing the amount of fresh air that is brought in through our HVAC systems, starting our occupied mode in our buildings two hours prior to um, occupancy and running that for two hours post occupancy to act as that flush um, throughout the building. Another piece of the mitigation strategy is hopefully um, we don't have any students or staff who come to the building sick, but if they do, we have supplied um, portable uh, air filtration units for our health rooms in every single school building. So if we have somebody who has COVID-like symptoms, they can remain isolated until um, a parent or a guardian can come pick up that student and take them out of the building. So again, it's a multifactored approach. There is not one thing that is going to prevent um, all potential risks, but when they continue to be added upon, um, the, the risk uh, is significantly reduced. And as you said, we have paid attention to all those different components and are doing and using strategies to put that all together and make it a minimal risk situation as much as we can. Absolutely. In spite of all the things that we've said, there might still be a parent or a staff member who's just feeling a little unsure. So if someone wants to learn more or hear more or get more of an explanation, who would you suggest they turn to? Sure, I'd always recommend that um, staff or the community, um, if they have a concern about the building where um, they work or a concern with where their student uh, goes to school, to start with the building administrator. And the building administrator can really facilitate a conversation with the expertise um, in the division of operations who can be able to provide a response um, to those administrators and, and hopefully um, address any of the concerns that someone might have. You're right, we have a lot of in-house experts in our maintenance department and COVID, however, is new and different and unique. So what have these experts been doing to make sure that they are hearing the latest and most valuable information and addressing changes that we need due to COVID? So I think one of the signs of a true professional is one who is um, willing and, and wants to uh, grow professionally and looks for um, opportunities to increase their knowledge base. And so our maintenance department has done a phenomenal job of uh, consulting with engineers, mechanical equipment suppliers, and some of our other partners to ensure that the practices that we um, have align with the best practices um, throughout the industry. We did um, a, a training session for all of our HVAC technicians um, with one of our engineer partners who just talked about um, COVID mitigation strategies um, and ensuring that we had a baseline understanding of all of our procedures system-wide um, as a professional development opportunity for that group of, of uh, maintenance experts. Because none of us are in this alone. There are schools across the country facing these challenges as well as you said businesses um, out there. So that collaboration is definitely beneficial to all of us. Absolutely. So I thank you very much for joining me today to sort of talk about this. And as you indicated earlier, we'll be coming back again to try to help our families and our staff understand how we have revamped some of our cleaning protocols in order to be responsive to all of the guidance that we have received around COVID-19. So Chief Operating Officer Paul Lebo, I thank you very much for being here today. And we hope you have learned more than you ever wanted to know about building ventilation.